Hi guys, it's a faculty Ranganathan S. Mel Kondula. I'm back again to discuss with you about uh, another series of history current affairs topics. Now, on this particular channel, we've been discussing uh, personalities who have impacted Indian national struggle, particularly women personalities who have contributed tremendously for the history of India, for the growth of India. And recently, when India celebrated Azadi Ka Amrit Mohotsar, India actually identified and recognized substantial contributions of specific women in Indian history. In today's session, I'm going to discuss with you about some of these women. First one, Anandi Bai Gopal Joshi. She was actually India's first female doctor in Western medicine, which is allopathy. She was the first woman from the erstwhile Bombay Presidency to graduate with a two-year degree in Western Medicine in the United States. So, allopathic doctor. She was also referred to as Anandi Bhai Joshi or Anandi Gopal Joshi, where actually the word Gopal comes from the name of her husband, Gopal Rao. See, Anandi Bhai Joshi's contribution in Western medicine is that to in India is huge because she was becoming a female doctor at a point where India had absolutely no female doctors. And see, female doctors are extremely important in gynecology and childbirth procedures. And Anandi Bai cracked the nut there. See, Anandi Bai was originally called Yamuna. Yamuna Joshi. She was born, raised in a Maratha Chitpavan Brahmin family. Very early in her age, she was married at the age of nine. She was married to Gopal Rao Joshi. She was only nine years of age. She's a child bride. Gopal Rao Joshi himself was a widower at a time when he married Anandi Bhai Joshi. And uh, nearly 20 years elder to her. So she was nine, he was 29. After the marriage, Yamuna Joshi's husband renamed her Anandi Bai, which was a common practice in the Maratha communities, particularly the Chitpavan Brahmin communities in those days, that women after marriage would be given a name by the husband's family or the post-marriage. Gopal Rao was a very progressive thinker of his period. And usually for the time, he even encouraged and supported Anandi Bai's education. He even helped and supported or believed very strongly of women education. Pa Anandi Bai was also relative of another famous socio-revolutionary of Maratha Bombay region, Pandita Ramabai. At the age of 14, Anandi Bai gave birth to a boy child, but the child lived only for a total of 10 days, mainly due to lack of substantial medical care. See, in those days, in medicine, it was all male-dominated. And getting maternity care by a male-dominated doctor or a nurse system, that too in a conservative Marathi upper class Chitpavan Brahmin family household, impossible. Just impossible. The death of her child proved to be a turning point in Anandi's life. It eventually inspired her to become a physician, trained in Western medicine. And the reality is her husband, Gopal Rao Joshi, encouraged her to study Western medicine. In 1880, Anandi sent a letter, Anandi Bai's husband, Gopal Rao, sent a letter to Royal Welder, a well-known American missionary 
stating his wife's interest in inquiring about a suitable post in the U.S. for himself. Eventually, a resident of Roselle in New Jersey, United States of America, her name is Theodosia Carpenter. She happened to read it while she was waiting to see her dentist in America. She was impressed by Anandibai's desire to study Western medicine and in fact, in a conservative, patriarchal Indian society, husband stepping up to support this wife to study Western medicine in America was a huge thing. Eventually, Theodosia Carpenter and Anandibai started to become very close friends. They developed a close relationship and friendship. Literally came to refer each other as aunt and niece. In fact, Theodosia Carpenter hosted Anandibai in Rochelle during her stay in United States. Eventually, in 1883, Gopal Rao was transferred to Serampur in Calcutta, near Calcutta in Bengal, and he decided to send Anandi by all by herself to America for her medical studies despite her poor health. Anandi Bai was very sick, but still, he sent her as an independent Indian woman to United States to study in medicine. Although apprehensive, Gopal Rao was able to convince Anandi Bai to go to America, study medicine, eventually set up an example and motivation and an inspiration for other women to pursue higher education and advanced education in India. Anandi Bai applied to Women's Medical College in Pennsylvania and uh, on learning her plans to perceive higher education in the West. In fact, most of the orthodox Indian society literally boycotted her. She was literally facing social boycott. The problem she was, certain things were pretty, you can say, unacceptable for Indian society in those days. Number one, she had left her husband in Bengal and gone to America all alone, even after being a married woman. Number two, she was studying English, Western education, living in the West, which was not acceptable culturally and religiously. And then to go to America, Anandi Bai was traveling via sea. Crossing of the sea was always seen as a bad activity for Indians, which would eventually make Indians even lose their religious identity and caste identity. Anandibai gave the famous Serampur address. She stressed on the need for female doctors in India. She emphasized that Hindu women could better serve as physicians to Hindu women. I mean, that was reality. In fact, in those days, the practice of actually getting medical maternity births was literally missing because the problem was pretty simple. All the doctors in the medical service were male. A Hindu female or a Muslim female of India would never take the medical support of a white man for maternity purposes. So she was right when she said that we need Hindu Indian doctors in India to serve as Indian doctors for Indians. Her speech received tremendous amount of publicity and even financial contributions started for Anandi Bai from almost all parts of India, everywhere. In America, Theodosia Carpenter received her in June 1883. The aunt and the Nizwana relationship continued. Anandibai wrote to the Women's Medical College of Pennsylvania and Philadelphia, asking to be admitted in the medical program. In fact, 
it was the second women's medical program in the world the very let me, let me, let me having women doctors in allopathy was a rarity even in europe and the western world i mean having female doctors was a rare activity even for the women world i mean even in the western world we've never seen female doctors even in the western world that was something unheard of thanks to rachel bodley the dean of the college she was successfully enrolled. Anandi Bai began her medical training at a tender age of 19. She attended the medical training at the age of 19 and uh, she graduated with an MD in March 1886. In fact, her thesis was obstetrics among the Aryan Hindus. Three years later, Anandi Bai returned to India in 1886. The princely state of Kolapur even appointed her Anandi Bai as physician in charge of the entire female ward of the Albert Edward Hospital in Kolapur. It was in one year later, Anandi Bai died of tuberculosis in February 1887. In fact, she was just about 21 years when she died. Although medicine was sent for her from America because she had big friends in America. But she kept studying medicine until her death and eventually Anandi Bai died. See, remember in Indian history, there is a major confusion about Anandi by Joshi and Kadambini Kangoli with regards to who was the first female doctor of India. Understand Anandi Bai got her degree in Western Medicine from the Women's Medical College in Pennsylvania. While Kadambini Kangoli entirely completed her education in India. Anandi Bai died at the age of 22 even before she got to practice her medicine. Thus, we can comfortably say that Kalambini Ganguly was the first female doctor to practice medicine, while Anandi Bai Joshi was the first female doctor who got her degree in Western medicine from United States. So, that part we don't need to have a major confusion. That part we don't need to have a major confusion where she comes from. Even after her death, several researchers, several writers continue to write about her, particularly her contributions for starting allopathic Western medicine for women in India. In fact, Doordarshan, India's prime TV channel, even uh, ran a series based on a television series of her life. An American feminist. Caroline Wells Healy Dahl even penned her biography, The Anandi Bai Story, in 1888. Anandi Bai, Gopal Rao, Joshi remained an inspiration for millions of Indian women who continued or who found motivation in stepping into the field of medicine. She created history by making huge strides so early into her life and see her impact or her contributions for western medicine or the growth of western medicine in india is big her contribution is substantial the institute of research and documentation in social sciences irds lucknow has even been awarding anandibai joshi awards in medicine in honor of her contributions towards the advancement of medical sciences in india that's a very important personality, Anandi by Joshi, that you need to know for uh, UPSC, CSC, women's as part of their current affairs. I've got a very quick announcement for you guys. This, this, this is a big uh, thing which is happening. On the 26th of March, Okay. 
on the 26th of March 2023. 26th of March 2023. Unacademy All India Prelims Mock Test is happening, guys. This is one of the one of the unique tests which happens both in online and offline mode. GS paper is going from 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. CSAT from 12.30 uh, p.m. to 2.30 p.m. This is one test which you really need to have and need to attempt. It actually gives you a very good clarity about your UPSC CSE prelims 2023. It's an all subject full length test. The questions are curated by educators themselves. It actually gives you an understanding of where you stand on an all India basis. The questions are exactly based on the same as prelims 2023 pattern. Delhi, Jaipur, Prayagraj, Patna and Pune, we also have offline centers. You can access this free test complete this test completely free by with the code shrivanar s r i v e n r now do not delay do not miss this exam let us let attempt this exam tomorrow 26th of march 2023 morning 9 30 a.m on an academy if you want to do it online you can do it on the academy website on the an academy app and if it's offline delhi prayagraj pune Patna centers, you can do this. That's it from this video here. I'll see you in the next session. Another personality, another important lady who has contributed for Indian history. Thank you. You have a nice day. Bye bye.